Okay, you guys, my name's MC, and you're watching SD Canada, the place to be for international students who want to study, settle, and explore the opportunities here in Canada. So, so if you haven't subscribed yet, and if you're new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe and don't forget to ring the notification bell next to it. You never forget any videos that upload every single week. And also, if you're not part of the uh, SLE squad, uh, make sure that you check my description box because you're gonna meet to talk to other international students and also you're going to meet some of my free resources and exclusive offers to all my school partners here in Canada. So in today's video, it's going to be inspiring because I'm gonna have Melanie, my friend. She's also a YouTuber here in Canada. So she was my batchmate before when we applied for a student permit in 2017 and now she's going to be in my video she I've invited her to share her journey from being a student till she got her permanent residency so she's going to share some tips and tricks on how to get there so be inspired in this video and watch it till the end guys hi Melanie good morning and welcome to SLE Canada good morning MC <laughs> we're so glad that you're here with us today me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know that we have a lot of viewers all around the world that wanted to come here to Canada and study and eventually settle. So, um, I'd like to know more about your background so our viewers will get to know you more. So, yeah. Yeah, so hi everyone. I am Melanie and I'm originally from the Philippines. So um, I studied here in Canada way back in 2017. Yeah. I uh, went to Southern Alberta Institute of Technology or SAIT uh, located in Calgary. <laughs> so I finished my program last April 2019. So I took a two-year di uh, two diploma program. Yeah, and then after that, I, I got a job uh, in my profession, in my line of work. And uh, I processed my permanent residency and now I'm a Canadian PR. Yay! Mm -hmm. So, so Melanie was my batch, uh, batch mate before, right? When we were um, um, uh, processing our student permit, we were in the same batch and you came from the Singapore first, right? You came from yeah, Singapore? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I worked in uh, Dubai for three years and then I worked in Singapore for six years. So when I processed my study permit, I was in Singapore. So I just want to know more about your, your journey because um, I know that you, uh, you picked Alberta as your home base, right? So how did mm -hmm. you come up with that decision that I'm going to go to Alberta and this is where I want to study? My journey in choosing the province, Alberta, it's not really very complicated like most of the students because I have a, I actually have a relative in Alberta, my aunt, my auntie, but I didn't uh, declare her as a relative. So I just prefer to go to Alberta because she's here and uh, she, she told me a lot of stories about uh, Alberta and Calgary and I find uh, I'm very interested about that. And the fact that I have relatives uh, make, made me feel made me feel safer than going to other province um, without knowing anybody, right? So I I immediately zeroed in to Alberta and Calgary. So my search for school is just based on Calgary locations. So that's quite simple compared to other students. So uh, since um, I am a chemist, chemist by profession, I am a registered chemist in the Philippines and I finished um, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry degree. I have been working all throughout the chemi chemical laboratories. So what I have in mind is I want to continue what I was doing. Yeah, so you never yeah. change your career. You just want to like, you, you only have one goal in your head. Right. Yeah, because it will make sense because I have a 10 year experience in chemical mm -hmm. laboratories. So if I change my career at this stage, it might not be beneficial for me at the end of my, my uh, journey here. Right. I will not be able to use my previous career if I change my, my program of study. Mm -hmm. So 
um, what I did is I, I, I searched for schools that offers similar program. It doesn't have to be really chemistry per yeah. se, right? It mm -hmm. can be chemical lab or manufacturing or environmental, as long as it's still in line with the uh, with uh with, um, with 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 my background i chose um sait chemical laboratory technology it's because it's the one with uh, it's the course that has the most relevance to my background mm -hmm. and the duration of the course is just two years so i don't have to really go for three or four years mm -hmm. plus um i like the co-op program that they had there initially i thought initially that's what pulled me into that program because mm -hmm. there is a one year um co-op which is a paid internship but at the end of my journey i also didn't go so for it's an optional <laughs> uh internship right yeah yeah mm -hmm. it is because it's gonna be paid so i was thinking that i can be paid full time during that year and i can save up for my next uh semester's tuition and all of those so that's what pulled me into that program you said that you didn't declare your 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 aunt your relative when you applied for your student permit so mm -hmm. why is that is it because you don't want to be you don't want to have the red flag of having a relative here in canada um that's one that's one and i i also i i don't think it's necessary for my case because um first she she's a she's my aunt and she's not really my immediate relative so at this stage not like your parents or your sisters right so yeah they did offer us offer to us to stay with them and we did stay with them for the first uh, month but um i think in in an application like in my study permit application i really have to weigh all the the consequences right so i have enough funds i have enough background all of those um i think i have enough um information for my application to be approved and i i didn't include that so that there will not be any more mm -hmm. issues actually that's that. what i always recommend to the students like if you have relatives here in canada and if they don't if they're not gonna sponsor you or anything there's no sense of you declaring them to your application because that will not even help you, right? Mm -hmm. If it's not a sponsorship. So you're just putting yeah. yourself at risk because... I believe yeah. there's a form where you need to declare your immediate relatives, right? Yeah. In, 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 the, in, in the application of the study permit. So in my case, um, my aunt is not really part uh -huh. of that, so I didn't have to declare that yeah. in my application. Yeah. Right now. I gotcha. So, mm -hmm. so when you arrived here in Canada, so you were like, okay, um, were you surprised? Like, weather, cost of living. How was your cost of living before when you were a student? How was your? How did you manage it? Like studying and then working, your budgeting. And so when we arrived here, so I arrived here with my husband, so the, the two of us. So we were we were married, but we don't have kids yet. So it's a flexible part. It's it's flexible for us, right? So we can just the two of us. It's easier to manage. So when we are when we arrived here, it was not it was summer or at least going to fall because I started in September 2020, uh, 2017, right? So the weather, the weather is perfect, actually. It was uh, sunny and a little bit, a little bit of breeze. So you and didn't then, have the culture shock or the weather shock when you came? Yeah, not, not really, not really in my, in our case, because first we have, yeah, as I said, my aunt was here and my aunt mm -hmm. is here. So my aunt and my uncle, mm -hmm. they, they, they accommodated us, they yeah. toured us around. When we started with our first week, they, they, they um, assisted us in getting the SIN and all of those. You're so lucky. It's not really, yeah, that's why I consider myself lucky at this stage. We did find an accommodation near school about 10 minutes away. How much was it? Safe. It was actually cheap because, you know, we are just, uh, me and my husband, we just rented a small room we, with a Filipino family. I think it was just $550. Oh, including um, everything? Like your yeah, your electricity? Yeah. And Did you get a part-time job right away when you came? 
yes i did actually i was so eager to work <laughs> immediately because i am not used to i've been working for 10 years and i'm not used to not, not earning working, money right? <laughs> yeah. so what, what's funny is i got a job um as a, in a burrito shop <laughs> which i've never done all my life <laughs> actually that's true even when i came here right i work in a restaurant and it was so difficult for me because i didn't have any experience at all and then like everything was it's just like it, i was i felt um now not like ashamed but i felt depressed a little bit or maybe oh, okay. at one point you question yourself is this the right decision you know what i mean <laughs> So for me, it's more of um, a new adventure. So I, I look at it in a positive way that I've never, I will never get a chance to do this. Like I never had to. I never had to do this in the Philippines or in Singapore or in Dubai. So here, um, I tried. I, I applied and I get. I got in and I tried to learn what they're doing. Right, but of course, it's very different from what I'm do, what I'm doing uh, in my profession. But I actually enjoyed it and uh, I learned a, a few things. Mm -hmm. But I have one question that I forgot to ask you. So when you came here to Canada, did you had uh, an agency? Did you do it yourself, or how did you uh, manage your application? Oh, I'm a. Um... A proud do it yourself <laughs> from start to finish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I I believe that I believe that I really need to understand the process if I want to move to Canada. Cause because um, I understand at, very early on that this process is not just the study permit. I understand that it's gonna be towards Until, the end, yes. right? So it's gonna be it's gonna be more beneficial for me if I know the process from understand. start to yeah. finish. So I just uh, applied online by myself. So I have one another question about your program. You said you took um, a program, a diploma program in chemical lab lab. Is that Am I correct? Laboratory, yeah. Yes. But then you finished a bachelor's degree before. So you didn't find it downgrade, right? It wasn't downgrade for you. Yeah, um, now that I've graduated, I, I, I really don't think it's a, a downgrade. Mm -hmm. So how did you defend that on your study plan then? So uh, yeah, so uh, there's, there's a part of the study plan or the statement of purpose, uh, what we call the purpose of visit, which is very crucial. You know that, right? Because yes. we, are, we, are, <laughs> we are DIY applicants. So yeah, so I had to defend my uh, career progression using the... Um, the chemical lab tech program. So there are a few pointers that I used to defend it. So first thing is, even though I had a bachelor's degree, it was 10 years ago. So yes. guess my age. <laughs> kind of it's old. It's obsolete already. <laughs> yeah, so in chemistry, there are a lot of developments. Well, the theories, they're the same. But if you think about instrumentation and um, all the developments, right? So um it's it's uh it's like a refresher in one in one sense and and um, so that's one thing the the my previous study was 10 years ago and then second thing i looked into the the, the chemical lab tech um courses right the list of courses that they have so i each one of them i just uh, check if i studied this and I yes this you cross check it. everything if you did like are you doing a redundant program or not exactly yeah. so there are a few during the start of the during the start of the um program but towards the end like especially in the second year there are lots of other courses like water treatment treatment quality and all these it's not part of my of the our curriculum yeah so yeah so that's a yeah, great so, idea actually you know because there are, uh, people always say, if you take a diploma, that's a downgrade. But then it's not always like the academic level is not always the basis, right? It always like the core courses of the program. You have to look at it. It's not easy. 
you know, you just don't base it on the name or the academic level. But yeah, you're right. So that's a yeah. new uh, discovery for us. <laughs> yeah, another thing is because it, I studied in the Philippines, right? So they have a different a way of approaching a curriculum. I studied in University of the Philippines, so it's supposed to be the best one, right? But so we have it, the degree in chemistry, it's focused on theory. Okay, so I learned a lot about theory and then I applied it in my work. But then in chemical lab tech, it's focused in instrumentation. So they have a lot of instruments there and we are allowed to use that and learn using that. So that's one big takeaway. After I finish my program, I know most of all the instruments that, that are in there. So that's a, a career pressure. I think that's like what I noticed too, like in comparison with our curriculum in the Philippines. We're always like more on theory, but we didn't have a lot of programs that will have uh, like internship, like like the program that they have here in Canada, especially in colleges. Like they're more fo focused on preparing you for um, uh, working in the future. Yeah, that's what I like here. Yeah, I agree. So now, you're done with your studies. So I just want to know more about the scholarship because I heard you got a scholarship when you were in, in that college, right? Yes, I did. Actually, you said I did this before. So towards the second year, because um, you know how, how I worked for 10 years already, right? And then this, I consider this program, my two-year program, as my rest from working so because <laughs> it's a different thing right you're gonna study you don't really have to focus in working so i did have a part-time job but eventually i quit because the, the workloads in uh, school it's getting heavier and i want to do my best you know the tuition is not cheap so i have to make sure i get the best grade that i can get in my case i got those scholarships but most of them are from academic achievements so, so scholarship because, awards. Yeah, right? yeah. So so it's awards. Yeah, scholarship awards. So um I think I, I got about five thousand dollars. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. I got three actually. So got three scholarship <laughs> awards? But how yeah. much uh like like what will be the average that you need to get? It <laughs> I, I don't know, but I got uh <laughs> A very nice girl. <laughs> so they were like, okay, this girl is very bright and smart. <laughs> so we'll give everything to her. Well, I, I, I think, uh, I'm not sure how they work it out. But when I applied, I got all, all, all my grades are 4.0. So probably they based it on the high grades or because it's an academic achievement, right? Yeah, so and I know they distribute the awards. They don't they don't give everything to everyone because in our program there are multiple awards where you can apply. I only got a few. I don't I didn't get everything. So <laughs> yeah, but mostly I got the ones that is for international students and the one that requires <laughs> So for international students who are watching this right now, you should take advantage of the the scholarship awards like your school are uh, you know offering for you because you have to apply for it they're not going to offer it to you right and exactly. then always uh, um uh, always uh, make sure that you're going to study hard achieve for the like the highest score that you can get because at the end it has like benefits for you so after graduation did you get a full-time job right away Actually, it was before graduation. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so since um, I'm very focused, I'm actually very focused in getting the permanent residency even before I completed my program. So that's one thing that I really, really want to tell international students. You have to be ready for your permanent residency application even before you graduate. So, you need to be diligent. Exactly. I had my express entry profile already yeah. before I graduate. I have my ECA. I have my IELTS, my English test. So um, before graduation, I think that was one month before graduation, mm -hmm. I started uh, applying for jobs. And not grad, sorry, one month before my program ended because my graduation was June and my program ended in April, end of April. So before I, I remember that was our finals week. 
I got a call from an employer. Actually, got a few calls. I think five companies oh, called me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but most because I widened my search. Right, I didn't. I didn't Just search only Alberta. in Calgary. Yes, that's, I searched yeah, that's all true. over Alberta. I even search in Saskatchewan or Manitoba, actually, <laughs> because um, I'm also thinking about the pathways, right? Maybe I can get a job there and it's faster there, mm-hmm. but it all depends where will I get the job. So. <laughs> Always aim to get a full-time job because after getting a full-time job, your PR will be like, will just right in front of you, right? That, that's right. That's right. So eventually I got this employer who is interested with me. And we we managed to sort things out, and I and I was I was hired actually. Oh, I think one week before my program ended, that was my finals week. So imagine it's just happening. I'm taking the finals. <laughs> I don't really I care. Was like, oh my god, I have a job. I have to, to pass my exam. <laughs> I don't really care about my exam anymore because I have a full time job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so yeah, I got that job, and we I got the job offer. But I didn't start until after two weeks, I think, or three weeks. Yeah, I didn't start until May 2017. So what's I, the position? What's what's? So it's a quality assurance coordinator position in a chemical manufacturing company here in Edmonton. Actually, it's another city. I, I was living in Calgary that time. And so that's I like had the to north, to, like southern part of um, Yeah, Calgary Alberta. is south and then Edmonton is north. It's north, yeah. And, yeah, so I have to move. We have to move. My husband and I have to move here in order to... Yes. Yeah, so, I, yeah. so that's why it's actually good to really focus um, on finding job before your... Uh, before the end of the program but of course not all of us will be lucky right but at least you tried and you know your 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 profile is going to be there and your application is going to be there whenever they need someone then they you have a chance of, of- so fast forward congratulations again on your uh, pr so you just recently got your permanent residence uh, this year right Yes, yes. So tell me more about the, the journey from graduation until you get your PR. So basically, I, gra- I immigrated through Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program or AINP. That's a provincial nominee program here in Alberta. Yeah. And particularly, it's the express entry stream. Mm-hmm. So what happened is I created my EE, I recreated my EE profile now with my Canadian education and my job offer. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my IELTS and I had my ECA before, right? So it's still not expired. Yeah, so I recreated that. And two days later, I received an invitation from the province. It's uh, called Notification of Interest from the province asking me to apply to AINP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means that if I pass, they are going to give me extra 600 points, right? Yes. Uh, On top of my CRS score. So during that time, my CRS score was only 380. So So I know that I still need to work uh, for one year in Canada and probably in uh, improve my English score so that I'll meet the cutoff of about 460, I think, during that time. So getting this nomination is very important for me because... If I get nominated, I know I will get an invitation to apply, right? So, yeah, so I went through the process. I actually applied paper-based because the express entry, uh, the AINP application is paper-based. And after, I think, two months. You got nominated. I got got the nomination. So, Mm -hmm. Uh, that was uh, so May, June, July, August. I got the nomination, and I got, and also I also got the invitation to apply. Mm-hmm. So after that um, process, all the permanent residency application, the EAPR, and we submitted it um, October mm-hmm. twenty nineteen, and we got the approval May twenty twenty. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. pretty fast. Actually, that's just one year after my program. But you, one of your strategies was uh, preparing everything, your IELTS, your, your education, credential assessment. You have everything before you graduate. So that's very yeah. important uh, point to take note of, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So now, what would be your final 
like words oh by the way if you guys want to uh, wanted to uh, know more about the permanent residency in alberta because um melanie has a youtube channel by the way <laughs> it's uh melanie on demand so i want all of you guys to go to her channel and know more about how to be become a permanent residency in alberta if you're really interested to to stay there or settle in alberta right so yeah, it's yeah, melanie right. on demand so now what would be your final word for all our aspiring international student is it worth it everything like from studying spending money until now is was it worth it for you yeah i would say it's definitely worth it okay yes. so um one thing that i would like to stress is that i have been working for 10 years already right i worked in dubai for three years and i worked in singapore for six years and all throughout, I didn't really get a permanent residency status. You know, it's impossible for Dubai, but in Singapore, it's kind of hard yes. as well because they have a lot of uh, things to consider in uh, getting a permanent resident. So um, coming to Canada and um, studying here and finally getting my permanent, our permanent residency in just three years time, it's really worth all the money and the sacrifices because after at the end of the journey you'll have a place that you can call a second home right like mm. because now we are permanent residents here and we can actually live our life without permits <laughs> which is <That's> true. <laughs> yeah you know how it goes when you have to renew and you know your permit expired and it's really a headache and troublesome process right mm. so yes it is expensive because um my program at SAID, it's $10,000 per semester. So four semesters, that's easy 40000 right? Plus all the other expenses. But then again, in Canada, you, I, have a, I have a husband with me here and he's working full time. So he was able to earn, actually he was able to earn all that money from his full time, mm -hmm. right? And plus, after your journey in Canada, after your program in Canada, you'll be able to work. Like for, in my case, I was able to find a job in my line of work, which pays me well. Mm -hmm. So that means I already have a return on investment, right? ROI. <laughs> and plus the taxes, right? So yeah. since you studied in Canada, you're allowed to get um, a tax refund or a tax credit. Yeah. So I, I think all in all, I got probably around $10,000 from the tax rebate. So that's just like one semester free, right? Yeah. So yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's hard at the start, but towards the end, it's going to be all worth it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you again, Melanie, for having us today, sharing your very inspiring story. And thank you, thank you, MC. Thanks for doing this for future um, or for aspiring international students. You know, it's really good to have someone you can listen to, and when you make the blogs, it's all based on experiences. Yes. So it's a good um, resource for future international students. And because during yeah. our time. Blogging yes. was not a was not a thing. So I remember I only read on forums. Get in a forum with hundreds of pages that you have to yeah. read through. You don't have the search button. You just have to like read it from start till the end. But now <laughs> you know technology yeah, so you just have to type it on YouTube and then you got boom, you got review, um, first-hand experiences, and I really like uh, hearing uh, first-hand experience from my fellow international students, you know? Yeah, and thank you for inspiring us as well, like us, like myself, you actually inspired me to do start my YouTube channel, right? Because um, helping other international students is actually a, it's actually a very fulfilling job, a uh, very fulfilling hobby, I would say, because it's not a job for me, but yeah inspiring them as well right because um especially for us we are um, applicants diy applicants mm -hmm. yeah we we want to get as much information as we can right so yeah yes, <laughs> yes. again thank you melanie and we'll see you there in alberta and we'll see you here in bc in yeah after all of this is over right yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you melanie 
So hope you guys like that video. If you want more videos like this, hit subscribe button and don't forget to hit that like button so more and more international students will see my video. And don't forget to visit Melanie's On Demand YouTube channel so you get exclusive insight about studying in Alberta and how to immigrate through Alberta. And again, thank you for watching and I'll see you to the next one guys. I love you all.